Okay, hi everyone again. Let's uh, start with the second presentation presentation session. Uh, so we have our uh, second speaker for today, and this is a second application. So I just introduced the first application for reservoir operation, and now we'll have our second application or using satellite remote sensing for estimating evapotranspiration using surface energy balance algorithm for land, which is uh, as I mentioned in my presentation called CBAL. And we will have uh, Indira Bose. Indira is a graduate research assistant at uh, University of Washington in Seattle. She's working with Dr. Faisal in the SASP research group. Indira graduated in, from uh, the Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology, BUIT, and with uh, the specialty in the water resources engineering. and. Uh, uh, if, if I don't know if some of you know or not, but Buit actually is one of the best universities in Bangladesh, especially in the water resource engineering. And uh, uh, myself, I have actually met a lot of people from Bangladesh. They are graduated from this school and they are actually very, very good in water resources and uh, research in the water resources. So uh, Indira also ranked among the top, top students for, uh, in, her, in her class. And she joined Dr. Faisal last year, and this is like her kind of first year of uh, graduate school, but she's doing actually an amazing job. She, uh, she did an only one year. She, I believe she did a lot of work in uh, Southeast Asia and using a lot of models, using a lot of satellite remote sensing. And she will introduce us today to the part of her work in the Indus and Ganges Basin in Southeast Asia using uh, the CBA, but not only CBA, but you also show part of your work using the GRACE satellite. So uh, join me to welcoming Indira Bose and yes, Indira, you can start your presentation now. Thanks, yeah, Shishan. Thanks ahead. for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. So uh, today I'll talk about a very uh, important component of hydrologic cycle, which uh, I think you all know that you have transpiration. And I'll talk about a special technique uh, called CBAL, as uh, Hisham already mentioned. and uh, uh, first, there you can. Do you have a problem with the transition? Just to click, click on the presentation one time. Sometimes, if you click on the presentation and then yeah, click. yeah, 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 yeah okay, thanks. Uh, so first, I'll start with the definition of evapotranspiration, uh, which is very common. So what are uh, the uh, evapotranspiration is actually a combination of two components. One is evaporation and another is transpiration. Evaporation, evaporation is actually uh, the water that is lost from the soil and transpiration is water lost from vegetation. So these two components together uh, is the evapotranspiration. Now, why we need this uh, for our uh, field, uh, especially in water resources engineering? So uh, this component has uh, some importance, which is uh, in field of irrigation. So we can have a great uh, idea of uh, water consumption uh, by plants, because we know that the water really is the amount of water that uh, they get uh, from the soil or uh, they extract from the root. So, um, with this evapotranspiration, we can have a great idea of uh, water consumed by plants. And hence, we can uh, design our irrigation supply according to that. And we can have uh, an idea of water rights and regulation. And also another um, component, I think Hisham already uh, told that uh, basin hydrology. So I'll not focus uh, about basin hydrology here. I'll just talk about the irrigation application. So there are several uh, measurement techniques, uh, uh, which are, uh, as you can see here, pan evaporation, lysimeter, eddy correlation techniques. These are all uh, techniques of measuring evapotranspiration. So here in the right-hand side um, is an image of uh, lysimeter. So all of these uh, techniques uh, have some uh, limitation, which is uh, using these techniques, we can uh, calculate evapotranspiration for a specific location. We do not get idea of evapotranspiration on a regional scale if we need it for our study. Uh, so why why we cannot use these uh, techniques which can which can give us the evapotranspiration for a specific location because evapotranspiration is highly variable in space and time. It is variable in space because of variability in precipitation and the soil characteristics and the vegetation types 
and it, it is variable in time uh, because of the variability in climate change. So we need to know the actual evapotranspiration going on over a region. And this can be done using satellite remote sensing very easily. So for satellite remote sensing technique, using the satellite remote sensing technique, we can use uh, several empirical equations. So these are some well-known equations. Uh, I think you know Blaney Riddle and Penman Monte, Hargreaves, Pritchley Taylor. So um, these, these equations have one limitation. So um, this equation actually give us the reference crop evapotranspiration which is for uh, ideal crop or a reference crop which is grass of 0.12 meter height so we do not uh, we cannot have the idea of actually what is going on over a place uh, so for getting the idea of the actual evapotranspiration we need to use some kind of coefficients to convert that reference crop evapotranspiration to the actual scenario so say for example, if uh, wheat is going uh, or growing over a farm, uh, we need to convert the reference crop evapotranspiration according to the uh, coefficients of wheat and also the soil soil condition over that farm. So that is uh, pretty complicated. So this this uh, can be done easily by surface energy balance algorithm for land. So we, we do not need any reference crop evapotranspiration for this case. We directly get what is going on over a place. So I'll, now I'll talk the, uh, detail about this technique. So the mechanism of this technique actually lies in the name of uh, the method, which is surface energy balance. So this uh, civil procedure actually solves the surface energy balance equation, as you can see here. This equation is known as surface energy balance equation. So uh, these are several components like net radiation, soil heat flux, uh, sensible heat flux. So after calculating all of these uh, variables, we can easily get the evapotranspiration, which is actually going on over a place. So why we are calling this evapotranspiration is uh, the actual evapotranspiration uh, because Sable takes care of everything. It can calculate the evapotranspiration over the vegetation, uh, it, it calculates by uh, identifying those regions uh, using the parameters called NDVI, leaf area index, and it has some uh, uh, parameters like calculation of hot pixels and cold pixels. Using those parameters, it can easily identify only the regions of vegetation. So we don't need to worry about the vegetation type anymore. So this is, this is one of the advantages of civil procedure. So now if I go to uh, go about in the individual component, so the first component was net radiation. So net radiation is actually the difference between net solar shortwave radiation and uh, net solar radiation. So net shortwave radiation is actually the difference between the incident shortwave radiation you can see here and the reflected shortwave radiation. And these shortwave radiations are ultraviolet rays and visible lights coming from the sun. And the long wave radiations are the infrared lights and infrared rays and the reflected portion. And also because of the incident shortwave and incident long wave, the ground, it gets heated up. That's why it emits some long wave radiation itself. So to get the net long wave radiation, we need to calculate all of these components. So all of these components can easily be calculated using a satellite remote sensing. I, I, I'll show the parameters later. And the uh, next component was soil heat flux. So soil heat flux were, is the rate of heat storage into the soil and vegetation uh, due to conduction, which is direct con uh, contact. So using this comp uh, equation, we can calculate the soil heat flux. So here, the surface temperature, alpha, which is albedo and NDVI, these components we calculate using satellite data. And same with the case of sensible heat flux. So we use this equation for sensible heat flux. So what is sensible heat flux? It is the rate of heat loss to the air by convection and both conduction due to the temperature difference in, between two heights, uh, which is uh, two meters and 10 meters. So using these parameters, we calculate sen sensible heat flux for calculating the evapotranspiration. 
So yeah, uh, these are the data we required for calculating the stable liver transpiration. So daily maximum temperature, many daily minimum temperature, uh, relative humidity, wind speed. These are all the weather parameters or uh, which, which we calculate using two products, which is uh, which are global land data assimilation system, which in short GLDS and global forecast system, in short GFS. And for calculation of NDVI, leaf area index, and uh, surface, surface temperature, all of those parameters are calculated using visible near infrared thermal infrared bands of Landsat products. So after inserting all these products to the above mentioned, the previously mentioned uh, equations, we uh, finally get our uh, desired output, which is stable evotranspiration. So now I'll talk about our case study, which is improvement of irrigation advisory service in South Asia. So uh, this, is, uh, this is the map, I think you, you saw it yesterday. So this is the map of a uh, gray strand where we can see that groundwater, where the groundwater is getting depleted at a higher rate. So here uh, in the circled region, you can see the Eastern Pakistan and also Northern and uh, Western, uh, Northern and Eastern India, these, these regions are facing groundwater depletion at a higher rate. So, so our focus was these, uh, these regions and we tried to find out actually what is going on over those, those uh, regions. So we, we selected some districts uh, uh, for over, over those regions. So in case of India, the basin was Ganges Basin, as you see here in figure A. And in case of Pakistan, it was Indus Basin, and these were the districts we selected over those basins. So as I mentioned that we improved the irrigation advisory service. So uh, first we should know that what is irrigation advisory service? So irrigation advisory service, or in short IAS, actually gives the farmers the information about how much they should irrigate or if they should irrigate or not. Uh, by doing that, we can uh, save a significant amount of water, especially during dry season. Uh, and now why dry season? Because in South Asian countries, during dry season, there is no precipitation and also the surface water is not uh, available. That's why the farmers extract groundwater and that is why the groundwater level is going down. So this IS service was introduced uh, over some regions so that a significant amount of water can be saved. So this IS service actually combines uh, data uh, from satellite, uh, which is past and current data, also weather data, as I already showed, and uh, also the crop types, and they calculate the crop water demand, and also on the future or the next week forecasted data from global weather models are calculated. And combining these two parameters, um, the, the farmers get the information about the present week. So this, this one is a summary of what I already uh, said. So we, we get uh, the satellite data, which is current or past rainfall and all our weather parameters. And we combine it with the global numerical uh, weather prediction model. And finally, we get uh, the crop water demand. Now, if that demand is greater than supply, and what is supply? The supply is the rainfall or the recent irrigation. Now, if the demand is greater than supply, then the farmers get the text message of irrigation. And if the demand is less than supply, then no irrigation is needed. So this, this is how the IS service works. So these are some text message interfaces in different countries you see here in Pakistan. This is how the farmers get the text, and this is in India, and this is uh, a website for Bangladesh. Now, uh, I already mentioned that we tried to improve the IAS service because it is already known as smart irrigation, and we tried to make it smarter. Uh, now the question is, uh, what is the need of doing that? Uh, because uh, IAS is a service, and as I mentioned that farmers uh, get text messages, so it needs uh, some cost. So according to our statistics, you can see here that for 100,000 farmers, the cost is approximately 10,000 USD per year. So sending text message to a millions of farmers, it is uh, next to impossible. That is why we proposed a solution. We wanted to do it on a zone basis. 
So we try to prioritize the, the zones where the groundwater is getting depleted at a higher rate. So by doing that, um, we can save a significant amount of water and also we'll be able to uh, save the cost of text messages. So for um, identifying the regions of uh, groundwater depletion, we used another set of satellite data, which is known as BRACE, as Hisham already mentioned. So it stands for gravity recovery and climate experiment. So this is how the GRACE data, uh, data looks like. So this is uh, one analysis over the Ganges Basin. So you can see here that um, the red colors uh, here in the color bar, this is uh, for the most native value, which is uh, the depletion. So grace, grace gives us actually the total storage change. So total storage change, change actually involves the component of groundwater change. That is why we used total storage change here. So here the red color is showing the regions with mostly depleted uh, groundwater. And here in the lowest part of Ganges Basin, we, we notice that there, there are some kind of uh, research, which is very negligible. And this, this was the trend from 2002 to 2016. And again, we did uh, some temporal analysis that uh, what is going on from 2002 to 2016 temporarily, and we found that the overall trend is again negative. So we, we uh, decided to look or focus more into this, this region and try to find out what is actually going on there. Is it um, some kind of wrong signal? Because uh, as you know that, uh, satellite uh, data has some uncertainties or sometimes it has some errors. So we tried to look there if actually over irrigation is going on there. So uh, for doing that, we compared two ev evapotranspiration. One is, as I already mentioned, Penman evapotranspiration, and another is the Seval evapotranspiration. So Seval evapotranspiration is actual water consumed by plants, I already discussed, and Penman evapotranspiration is known as the crop water demand which is calculated using this equation. So I was talking about reference crop evapotranspiration evo earlier. So this is, this is what the equation looks like. This gives us the uh, reference crop evapotranspiration and to relate it to the real world scenario or to a real farm, say for example, where wheat or rice is growing, uh, growing we need to convert this reference crop evapotranspiration uh, using this factor known as KC. This is for the crop type. And another factor is KS, which is for the soil stress or soil moisture condition. So use, uh, after multiplying these two constant to the reference crop evapotranspiration, finally we get uh, what is known as crop water demand. So when the crop water demand is less than what is actually going on, we can easily say that over irrigation is actually going on there. So as actually evapotranspiration uh, was represented by severity. So you can see here that when severity is greater than penmanity, then the, then the irrigation is excess or over. Or in turn, we can say that high extraction of groundwater during dry season. And if the stable evapotranspiration is less than penman evapotranspiration, then we can uh, say that under irrigation is going on there. Uh, that means that low extraction of groundwater. So these are some results we got over uh, those four regions I showed earlier. So these are the spatial variation of over irrigation and under irrigation. So we calculated over and under irrigation, just we, we, we just took the difference between uh, Sable and Penman evapotranspiration and converted it to the percentage values. So uh, this is an uh, uh, example from uh, January 2013. You can see that almost over all over the regions, uh, you can see here, here, uh, also here, these orange colors, uh, and th these are the percentages and the colors. So red color is greater than 100, orange is 50 to 100. So all over the place, uh, the over irrigation is going on, so which is very alarming. And also in Pakistan, you can see the scenario is worse. Um, uh, the the uh, percentages greater than 100 is uh, here also someplace here, 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 and all over here. So these are the results we got uh, from our analysis uh, using stable evapotranspiration. So finally, we uh, found out that 
uh, all over the dry period, which starts from November to April, some kind of over irrigation is going on over all of the districts we selected. So the, this is one example for, from Ganges Basin. So you can see that uh, here is going on over irrigation also here, all over, all over the month actually. So we finally, we concluded that if we use this zone-based uh, uh, IAS service, then we will be able to save 85% of groundwater in Northern India and 87% of uh, groundwater or irrigation water in Eastern Pakistan. So yeah, th this is how uh, we calculated uh, the evapotranspiration and we applied to uh, find out the irrigation scenario and uh, we find out how much water can be saved using these improved IS service. And uh, with that, I'd like to conclude uh, my presentation. So we can see that uh, using satellite remote sensing, we can easily manage our irrigation system and we can have the idea of uh, groundwater depletion and associated irrigation scenario over any region and uh, the improved irrigation advisory service, which we de which de developed, that is transferable to actually anywhere in the world if we have the satellite coverage there, and uh, uh, we can save a significant amount of water with uh, our improved IS service. And in a nutshell, we can say that using this technique, using remote sensing, our proposed improved IS, we can make a significant positive socioeconomic impact. Uh, finally, I'd like to uh, thank uh, my professor, Dr. Faisal Hussain, and uh, another professor from University of Houston, uh, Dr. Hong Keeley, and my sponsors, and last but not the least, my SASWI research group members. And uh, well, okay, uh, thank, thank you for your time, and I'd like to answer the questions if you have any. Okay, thanks. Thanks very much, Indira. That's a wonderful presentation, and uh, it's uh, very good to know about the CBAL and about the uh, storage change also using the GRACE uh, satellite mission. So let's uh, start taking questions. If anyone has a question, just uh, as I said, you can raise your hand and or post it in the chat box. So uh, please ask a question. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we have enough time to take questions. So please, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask a question. So, thank uh, you. Just uh, okay. I have a question in Dira. Uh, I think Muhammad Ahmad. Okay, Muhammad, you can go first before I ask my question. Okay, Muhammad, you can go first. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you for your uh, presentation. Uh, how uh, how you calculate the the top moisture or the 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 equations that you presented. Uh, yeah. Which one? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Muhammad, can you say again? The, the, the equation topic? for the yeah for for the soil moisture. You showed us the uh, equations for energy. Uh, this one. Yeah. So these individual uh, components. Yeah. So yeah, as I, as I showed here, uh, so say for example, here is uh, net uh, radiation, soil heat flux and sensible heat flux. So all of these components has uh, some individual equations. So uh, for soil heat flux, this is the equation. And as I, as I mentioned that okay. this TS, which is surface temperature, this uh, alpha is albedo and NTBI, so all of these uh, parameters are calculated using these, these satellite data. Okay, so so in the in in these uh, in these equations, uh, how how you can estimate the the top so soil moisture? Top soil moisture? Yeah. You mean the surface uh, surface surface soil moisture? Yeah. So, uh, soil, there, there is no soil moisture parameter here. So you say the, there is a precipitation and uh, for, uh, there is uh, two parts, precipitation and uh, evapotranspiration. Okay. For, for civil calculation, we do not need precipitation. We only need to know the components, which is uh, the net, net radiation, soil heat flux and sensible heat flux. 
and for for so what, these parameters mm. we only need maximum temperature minimum temperature maximum relative humidity minimum relative humidity and mean wind speed that's all the weather parameters we need for calculation of sea bulb okay so thanks Muhammad, yeah yeah uh, and actually Hamad, uh, yeah this is actually uh, uh, it's an energy balance, not a water balance. So probably that's why there is no precipitation, there is no soil moisture. It's an energy balance equation. So we are doing energy balance here, not a, a water balance. So let's move to the second question. There is a question here in the chat box from Mahmoud. Uh, what is the resolution of beard? And is it possible to calibrate with two or three worlds for one? The, probably he means Grace, yeah. I think Grace Mahmoud, right? What is the resolution of grace and is it possible to calibrate with two or three welds for one pixel? Okay, uh, so the resolution of grace is actually uh, very coarse, which is uh, 250 to 350 kilometer. Uh, so we uh, actually uh, resampled it to 100 kilometers, but uh, it is still not possible uh, to calibrate using welds. That is why we converted or we switched to several method uh, so that we can locally investigate what is going on there because using grace as the pixel size is very coarse, we cannot uh, uh, investigate what is uh, going on in a regional scale. So we converted to several method, which is of 100 meters resolution and we can easily um, uh, calibrate that using the well values, which we did for our actual study. So I, I didn't show it here, but in our actual study, we actually um, validated several transpiration data using the, some well, well data, which is, we collected from some organizations. Thanks, Indira. Thanks, Mahmoud, for the question. So let's move to the next question, Mahmoud uh, Abu Halima. He's raising his hand. So Mahmoud, you can go ahead and mute yourself and ask the question. Uh, yeah, thank you, Indira, for your present presentation. I have uh, two questions, actually. Uh, the first one is, uh, uh, why did you use exactly the Feynman method as compared to uh, other methods for, uh, for comparing with the Siebel? Uh, the second question is, um, uh, how much is the accuracy of Siebel to, to, to compare it with, uh, with empirical equations? Uh, and you mentioned that, uh, that Siebel uh, could, uh, uh, could reach 80% reduction in, in water or 85% reduction. So uh, how do you know that it's not uh, over predicting or over calculating uh, uh, some parameters in, in, water, in water resources calculation? Yeah, so uh, as, several, uh, as we calculated using all of the satellite parameters, definitely there are some uncertainties in civil calculation. That is why we try to uh, calibrate or validate it using the actual scenario of uh, those regions which, uh, which we uh, get from the well data. So the well data gives us the actual ground condition there or the groundwater table values. So we tried to compare that with the civil level transpiration and we found out that uh, a very good correlation between civil level transpiration and um, the well data which is uh, the, the correlation factor was uh, somewhere between 0.8 to 0.9. Uh, so yeah, that's how we uh, know that uh, it, it is not uh, overestimating or underestimating very much. And uh, we, we selected our uh, spend manual transpiration for crop water demand because it is, uh, uh, it was used in several studies and uh, for, for crop water demand, uh, it is actually, I think better than other, other, other techniques because Penman wanted equation is uh, actually actually some modify some kind of modified equation which uh, the Blaney, Creedle, Hargreaves, or Christie Taylor's method have some simplified version. But Penman of transpiration is uh, a very detailed one. I think that is why we uh, we selected Penman method for crop water demand. Thank you. Thank you, Indira, and thanks, Mahmoud, for your question. Any more questions? <clears throat> Still have time. I think we are we are in good time. I think to have more questions. Mm. Yeah, I just have a quick question, Indira. I was just wondering. I mean, it's a it's a great application, even if we want, as you said, we can transfer this to uh, different regions as well. So, 
what do you think like in terms of like the time it might it might take to or i think the system is already implemented so how how long it takes for the system to maybe send a message or something i mean doing all this kind of processing the cval and uh having the data from grace so is it like uh like how often it can send a okay. message and yeah so uh as civil civil was using uh, the landsat product mm -hmm. so using only civil we can uh, do it bi-weekly but if we incorporate this grace uh, data with the whole service then it would be a monthly value because civil sorry the grace only gives us a value once in a month yeah i think yeah okay Thank, thanks india yeah that's uh, i think it's skill is important yeah well i think we have one more question from terry again uh he's raising his hand so you can uh uh, uh yeah you can just unmute yourself and ask a question terry again <clears throat> or if not you also can just type it in the chat box Yeah, I'm not sure if he's, uh, you are muted. I mean, if you are talking, I think you are muted. So can you unmute yourself? Yeah, here we go. So you go ahead and ask that question. Right now? Yeah, 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 I can. Okay, thank go you. Ahead. But I have a question from the presentation is, yeah, yeah. Can I ask right now? Yeah, sure, sure. Oh. Go ahead. We can hear you. Uh, 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 can we check the uncertainty of the method for the efficiency of the irrigation type we selected for a particular area? Uh, sorry, can you repeat again? Is that clear? Can you repeat the question again? Torian, can you say the question again? I think you're you're talking about the. Is the that possible to check the uncertainty of the to check the efficiency of the particular irrigation site to be irrigated, whether it can be for data scars or not? Yeah. Hisham, did, did you understand the question? Think, can you explain? I, the question? I think he's. I mean. He gets the kind of the, his voice was not. I think the first part of the question, what I heard is asking about the, uh, if if we can check the uncertainty for a particular irrigation site when we are using the the CBA. But he's talking more about the efficiency of the irrigation. You mean I think, uh, but you might correct me, Kurgan, if I'm wrong. But he's talking about the efficiency of the irrigation, maybe the irrigation methods that's being used in the in a particular site. Okay, so uh, we are we are not considering any irrigation method here. So irrigation method means uh, like flood irrigation or all of those uh, techniques, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's what I, I think. That's what he meant. So yeah, yeah so, I, I think. Yeah, I we, we we are not considering those factors here. We are just uh, trying to find out how much the plants are getting and how much they should get. Yeah, thank you, Indira. I think, uh, Torian, if you if, if this is answering your question, or if, if you want to ask more questions, yeah, because we are not able to hear you, you can just type the question in the chat box or uh, you can send it to me as well. I think we have one more question from, uh, maybe this is the last question from uh, Awad Muhammad. Yeah, you can go ahead. You can, this is probably the last question before we go to break. Uh, thank you so much, Indira, for uh, your presentation. Uh, I am uh, asking a question concerning the uh, different uh, scenarios. Could using this uh, uh, CBAL, could we use it for comparing different cropping pattern scenarios in order to decide which one of these uh, could bring us uh, highest productivity? Uh, for different crop types, you're saying that? What? Are you, you're you are, yeah. Go ahead, India. Yeah, are, are you saying that, uh, can, can we do it for different crop types? Um, I am asking whether we can use this uh, uh, model in order to decide which uh, cropping button could be used in order to increase our productivity. Which cropping pattern could be used? Yes, trying to, to, to investigate different scenarios. 
Uh, so I think if you uh, consider scenarios in different farms, say if you compare the scenario over wheat and uh, if you uh, go to another place where rice is go going on, and, uh, as you know, rice is very water extensive. So yeah, we can, we can know which, um, I mean, which uh, crop can uh, decrease the use of water and increase the productivity. But, uh, but in some regions, you know that some kind of crops are a must need. So uh, yeah, so we cannot replace rice with wheat uh, because wheat, wheat needs uh, low, uh, very, very lower water than rice, but we cannot uh, replace rice with wheat. So yeah, I think yeah, that is the scenario. But yeah, we can know that which which uh, which uh, wheat can I'm sorry which crop can increase the productivity or decrease the use of water okay thank you so much thank you india and thank you a lot for your question i think we uh we can stop here i don't think we have more questions but feel free if you have any questions just uh, send it in the chat box or send it to me or indira in in email and uh probably have enough time to Take the break. We're supposed to start the next session, the practical session using Google Earth Engine, at uh, ten thirty. So I think we have uh, enough time. And uh, just be before we leave, I just uh, yeah. By the way, actually the the CBAL is the evapotranspiration, and using the CBAL method, it was also coded and scripted in Google Earth Engine. So and the grace and all this work uh, India showed is was done on Google Earth Engine as well. It is uh, like just. Uh, I'm just say, showing you an example of why Google Earth Engine is nice. So it's very important to, to use and do different kinds of applications. And I hope everyone like learn it from this application. It's a kind of diff different region. You know, I, I showed my application in the Nile River Basin, but it's probably it's good also to so to see what's going on in different transboundary basins. So, uh, oh, just a one more reminder for the don't forget to, to explore the papers. I we have it in the shared drive. So we have papers for each topic. So please try to visit these papers and read it. And if you have any questions, we uh, we can discuss it in the practical sessions. So let's take a break now. It's uh, been all seven. Let's meet back again at 10.30. And uh, yeah, during this time, if you have any problem or any issue with the Google Earth, Earth Engine registration, let me know. We can try to help before starting our practical session. So thanks again for joining. And uh, let's reconvene at 10.30. Thanks. <laughs>